We have a slight change in our program today. Pastor Doug is sick. He was our speaker. But we have a wonderful blessing for you. Lauren Showquist has agreed to step in in Doug's place and talk to us today. And you're going to be blessed. Because those of you that know Lauren know that he has a big heart for God. So welcome, Lauren, everybody. It is good to be here today. How many of you have ever had God interrupt your schedule a little bit? (laughs) Um, I got up, I'm not an early riser, so um, in fact it was kind of late this morning when I got up, I guess it is on, and um, I checked my text messages And I had two of them. Well, last night uh, we had a meeting uh, as well. Um, I'm in the Gideons, and we had a meeting last night. And uh, Carol and I had agreed to go out to lunch today with another Gideon couple. Uh, Basically, it's a belated um, Veterans Day, this free dinner thing that you can get. And we were going to do that at noon today. So the first text that I received was from the Langfords asking me if I could be the speaker today. And I thought, oh shucks, that is too bad because I've already got an appointment to go to lunch today. Phew, I'm off the hook. (laughs) And then I get the second uh, text message and uh, that one was from the couple that we were going to go to lunch with and that text said that the restaurant that is going to honor this coupon isn't open at noon. (laughs) Ah, bummer. (laughs) So, um, I am the one during high school days that refused to, to take a speech course. I went off to college, that's where I met Carol, but that has nothing to do with this part of the story. (laughs) And uh, all through four years of college, I refused to take a speech course. And after a number of years of uh, being um, in the workforce, I was asked to be a Gideon, and I knew that Gideons occasionally go to churches and make a presentation and appeal for funds. And I refused to do that for three years. I kept saying no, no. But, you know, kind of by this time I knew that I should, and I kind of knew I maybe could. But finally, after three years, I acquiesced and took the assignment to be a church speaker. Well, we have a process where you have to qualify before they just send you out. Well, the Saturday morning before I'm going to speak the next day was the qualification. I have no idea what would have happened if I would have flunked. (laughs) But anyway, I qualified and God opened doors that I would never have imagined because of obedience. So, with that in mind, um, as I look at the crowd, it's always good in your speaking if you kind of know the crowd that you're talking to. Now, do we have anyone here today? I thought I saw somebody. Do we have anyone here today that is under the age of 70? I, that you're the one I saw. You, you are the one I saw. I, I couldn't spot you at first. Thank you for raising your hand. And thank you for being here today. You make the rest of us feel so much better. <laughs> Is this your first time here? Second time. Well, thank you for coming today. You are an encouragement to me. Now, for the rest of you that are over 70, and by the way, I, um, I'm older than Carol, but she had a birthday last year, 
and it's a good thing when you have a birthday. <laughs> that means you're still around. <laughs> and I was kind enough to remind her at this particular birthday that she is now closer to 90 than she is to 80. Isn't that nice of me? No, got in the back, Lauren. <laughs> but I also reminded her that I have already paved the way and it's not that bad. Okay, so another question. So now that you know that we're over 85, uh, anybody here in that category that you are closer to 90 than you are to 80? Oh, we, we've got some, Bob. I see you. I see that hand in the back. That's good. That's good. Well, at this particular age, uh, how many of you are feeling more comfortable just kind of sitting around, you know, rather than being real proactive? So we, we've got some hands up. That's, that's okay. Well, let me tell you the story of a man that. Uh, was not content with just sitting around. Uh, until a few years ago, I had not heard of this man's name. His name is Larry Wallet, W-A-L-L-E-T, I think it is. Maybe there's two T's in the end. Any, anybody heard of Larry Wallet? You probably haven't. Because Larry uh, always had a dream of flying. He wanted to be a pilot. So he went into the Air Force, and because of the bad eyesight, he failed the vision test part of being a pilot. So that dream no longer became a reality. So he ended up having a rather, I would say, mundane job. Just, you know, nice, nice job, but just pretty, pretty mundane. But one day he got the idea, he always wanted to fly. So what he did, he went down to the um, surplus store and picked up a jug or whatever you call it, a container of helium and a whole bunch of these weather balloons. No, not, not the big kind, but just small weather balloons. He already had the lawn chair. <laughs> so he um, hooked up, uh, well, first of all, he anchored the lawn chair to his pickup truck. And then he attached the balloons to his lawn chair, and then he used the tank of helium to blow them up. And uh, so now all these balloons are ready to lift them off the ground. But he decided that uh, it might be good to take a sandwich with him. So he took, uh, you know, packed a little lunch with him. And then he thought, well, I'll take my BB gun with me so that at the appropriate time I can shoot at the balloons and come back to Earth. Well, now the balloons are all, you know, all blown up and he's ready to go. So he cuts the cord and all these balloons and he didn't just nicely, so softly go up, but he shot up like a rocket. <laughs> Nor did he go just to 100 feet or 200 feet or maybe 300 feet. He went to 11,000 feet. <laughs> And he is sitting in his lawn chair wondering, how do I get back to Earth? <laughs> well, this is Southern California, and all of a sudden he's drifting into the flight corridor of the descending landing airplanes, and pretty soon a, a pilot came by and uh, radioed the tower and said, there's a guy up here sitting in a lawn chair at 11,000 feet. <laughs> and he's got a gun. <laughs> well, the tower called the uh, Navy Rescue Squad 
And they went up in a helicopter and finally pulled Larry down. I don't know how they did that, but he got him down to earth. And he's immediately arrested. But a reporter asked Larry, Larry, why did you do this? Larry's response was, a man just can't sit around. (laughs) So I hope that each of you are that mindset that you just can't sit around. I suppose we should get spiritual being we're here for a lesson today. So I'm reminded of Mark 16, 15, the Great Commission according to Mark. Mark 16, 15 says that we are to go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Now, most of you are over 70, except. (laughs) Uh, Some of you are like Carol and me. You're closer to 90 than you are to 80. So as we think about that great commission again, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation, and we think about Larry Wallet that just can't sit around, do you think that we should be doing something? Yeah, Yeah, okay, you're still there. (laughs) I can't see you, but you're still there. And I do apologize that if you were expecting Doug today, I ask your forgiveness (laughs) and patience. But maybe we can all relate to this. Maybe, you know, God doesn't make mistakes. You know, I, I told you that um, I didn't, I refused to, I refused to speak, didn't take the speech courses and everything. And um, so I've, I don't know if God really agreed to this or not, but I kind of told God that uh, I, I will speak if my calendar is available any place, any time that you want. Uh, and God kind of took me up on that. Last year I spoke at 25 different church churches presenting the Gideon ministry. And, uh, you know, that's about every other Sunday. And that's really more than the Gideons want us to do, but, you know, I guess that's between God and me. Now, I forgot to tell him that, please, I would like 24 hours notice. (laughs) But maybe he heard that and misunderstood and said, I'll give you two to four hours notice. (laughs) Well, anyway, we're here today. And I don't know where I was before I got off on that rabbit trail. But at this age, uh, does it say, according to the Great Commission, we're to go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation? If you're under 70, and if you feel like it, no, it, it doesn't say that. It just says we are to go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. So at what age does God want us to stop being his witness? And we have Acts 1.8 that says that we are to be his witnesses. In fact, he said, I will, um, how does that go? I know where we're supposed to witness. And you will receive power. Yes, he, he promises the power. Not the helium tank, but he promises the power that we will be his witnesses. And he doesn't say, up until you become a senior citizen, you are to be my witness. No, it goes on and on and on. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, uttermost part of the earth. And uh, some people think uh, Cameron Park Shingle Springs is the uttermost part of the earth. Well, it's a pretty nice uttermost part of the earth. So let me share another, uh, this is kind of a real airplane story. I was speaking at another church in Shingle Springs uh, about three and a half weeks ago. 
and uh, it was the full presentation that day, it was about 45 minutes, and that, that's quite a long time. We won't be here today for 45 minutes, at least not with me speaking. But um, when I finished speaking, the 45 minutes, a lady in the congregation got up, and she had prearranged, unbeknownst to me, that she had a Gideon story to share. Now, she had already cleared this with the pastor, and he said it's okay that she does this. Now, if you are the sister of the pastor, it's pretty easy to get permission to do that kind of spur of the moment. And uh, that's who the lady is. She is sister of the pastor. Um, the sister of the pastor also happens to be married to a pastor. And they live in Scotland. So, let me share the story of two ladies from Scotland the pastor's wife in Cameron, or Shingle Springs is one of them living in Scotland, married over here. And there's another lady in Scotland that these two ladies do not know each other. The other lady from Scotland two years ago had come to the U.S. just like she had a few Sundays ago or a couple of Sundays ago and was visiting her family in Shingle Springs. The other lady in Scotland was one of those ladies that's trying to find herself. And um, she had gone to Australia. So these two ladies, one went to Shingle Springs. This story, you've got to pay attention to this story. <laughs> one lady from Scotland went to Shingle Springs. The other down under is in Scotland, or in um, Australia, trying to find herself. So um, she ends up in an airplane someplace near Australia, maybe on the way to Australia. Anyway, she's on this airplane and she happens to be seated by a Gideon from Australia. And they strike up a conversation and this lady from Scotland not the pastor's wife, but the other one. One's trying to find herself, is talking about trying to find herself. And lo and behold, he has a little New Testament. Australian Gideons do the same thing we do over here. This little New Testament. And he gave it to her. Along with other words of witness. But he also told her, we would like to invite you, my wife and I would like to invite you to come to our home for dinner when we get back to Australia. Well, she was very touched by this gesture that uh, was extended to her, and also the fact that she had been given a free gift. Now today, I don't know if you noticed or not, but on the back table, we have a free gift for any of you. Where is Eric? Eric Rice. Where are, there he is, right down there where you should be. I just can't see you very well from here. Did you know that Eric Rice, you can spell his name backwards and forwards, and you get the same thing, both first and last name? Now, aren't you glad that you know that? <laughs> So back to the story, we have a free gift for you today as well, and I don't know if Mike Curtis is going to be watching this little video, it is being recorded I believe, is that right Bob, we're recording this today, we get the thumbs up, so Mike, if you are watching this video, it's because of you, Mike, because of you, Mike, I should watch the camera when I do this that this lady from Scotland, or that you're a part of this story, because Mike is the one that suggested to us local Gideons here that we should make these available when we go to a church and encourage the people in the church to be the witness that we are supposed to be. So yes, we are in church. Yes, we have these little New Testaments. And yes, we have God's word that says we are to be his witness. 
And the fourth thing, we are to proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. So lots of good reasons that you should take one of these little testaments and be the witness that God wants you to be. But it all started with Mike Curtis suggesting that us local Gideons do that. Now, we local Gideons uh, have paid for these little scriptures out of our own pocket, and that's fine. Uh, They're only like $2 a piece. I know that Eric has uh, gotten a hold of a bunch of these and has been the witness that God wants Eric to be. So thumbs up to Eric for doing that. So anyway, this lady from Scotland, trying to find herself, ends up with an invitation for dinner and a little New Testament. In the meantime, the other lady from Scotland is in Shingle Springs. And it was about two years ago that uh, I was speaking at that same church. I don't know why they invite me back. I've been there for 10 years in a row. I've told them everything I know three times. (laughs) But this time was the first time two years ago that we had these little New Testaments. I do not personally remember this lady receiving one. But a couple of Sundays ago, she told me that she did one of these, just like you can have today. So anyway, uh, the ladies both eventually get back to Scotland, and they finally meet up with each other. So they get to talking, and the one still hasn't found herself yet, but is getting close. And the other pastor's wife, sister of the pastor locally here, has the one that I had apparently given her. And... uh, It turns out that the lady trying to find herself said that she's misplaced this one from Australia. Oh, no problem. I have one that uh, I got here in California. I'll give that to you. And they continued their witnessing, their sharing. And the last slide that she showed was a slide of her having accepted Jesus, but the slide shows her in the waters of baptism as she's being raised up proclaiming her faith in Jesus Christ. And that reminded me of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses about 3 through 7. So the disciples are kind of squabbling a little bit as to guess, I guess, who's the best, who's the better of the bunch, and, you know, where are we going to sit, and that kind of thing. But God reminds them in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses about 3 through 7, um, he said that, I'm paraphrasing here, that you guys are just men. In fact, you're kind of fleshly men, you know, more concerned about yourself than anything else. And he goes on to say that I planted... God is saying that I planted, Apollos watered, but God gives the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, nor he that watereth, but it's God that gives the increase. So the point of that verse is, it's all about God. It's not about us. We're just mere mortal human beings. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gives the increase. So in our little story here that I'm relating, it was basically Mike Curtis that planted the idea to make these available, like today, like at other churches where Gideon speak. Thank you, Mike, for coming up with that idea. I'm in a Gideon, Carol and I have been Gideons for 46 years, and I never thought of that. But I've, I'm not that creative, out-of-the-box type thinker either. So think of all the players in the life of that lady that's trying to find herself from Scotland. You know, Mike Curtis is one. He thought of the idea. Uh, I guess I am, too, because I gave it to her. And then the Australian Gideon on the airplane that gave her one also and invited her to dinner. And then the pastor's wife, who's now back in Scotland, as she is giving this lady a second New Testament, and ultimately the lady prays and receives Jesus, gets baptized, 
and is doing very well, solidly linked into the faith. So it's not about us, it's about God. How many of you have been to Harlingen, Texas? Anybody been to Harlingen, Texas? Oh, yeah, it's down by the border, right? Yeah, okay, that's good. You're the one with the eggs, too, aren't you? No, 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 but you, I mean, you, you have brought eggs here, right? Am I, yeah, okay. That has nothing to do with the story either. <laughs> <clears throat> but now you know who the egg man is. <laughs> so uh, Harlingen, Texas, it's about 15 miles from the border. Uh, Carol and I found ourselves in Harlingen, Texas last July. Uh, we stayed at the, are, are you from Harlingen or just there? Just, just went there. Okay, that's what we did too. So we found ourselves at the best western hotel in Harlingen, Texas. So Angie at the front desk checked us in and a very pleasant young lady and we soon made our way to the room and when I entered the room that room was the cleanest smelling room that I have ever been in. Now, I've stayed at a lot of hotels. I've made about 40 international trips for the Gideons, lots of hotels, and I wish I could have had a, every one of them would have been like this best Western, but they weren't. Cleanest smelling room that I've ever been in. And I made my way over to the wall air conditioner by the window. And uh, there was a chair, and there was a bucket, probably looked like it could have been an ice bucket, and it's getting a stronger and stronger odor as I'm making my way to that air conditioner unit, and I looked inside the ice bucket, and there's some liquid, and I picked it up and smelled it, Clorox, and pretty soon about that time, there was a knock, and well, I, you know, I didn't want that in the room, so I went over to the toilet and disposed of it environmentally. I have no idea if I did the right thing or not, but I didn't want it in my room. And I put the uh, little bucket down between the commode and the bathtub. And pretty soon there was a knock on the door. We answered the door, and it was Angie, apologetic that she had forgotten to take that container of Clorox out of the room before we had checked into the room. <clears throat> I said, Angie, don't worry about it. Uh, I've already disposed of it. I've taken care of it. And um, Angie, I, I have a gift for you today. Now what I'm doing here, I am sharing with you something that you could do. Well, it may not be an Angie, but think outside of the box as I tell the story. So I picked up this little New Testament or one similar to it and uh, said, I have a free gift for you. So Angie, you know, I had to, she, we're by the door and I had to walk, you know, quite a ways over by the window to where the suitcase was to retrieve my little gift. And I'm making my way back and Angie says, you must have been sent from God. And I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I kind of take that, it's okay to witness, you know. You must have been sent from God. So I thought, well, I better witness, I guess. So um, here's where the training begins. When you pick up your little New Testament, you might keep in mind that in the very front of these New Testaments is a little index, God's help in crisis, it's labeled. And then alphabetically, as I'm looking at this one, the very first, you know, A to Z, where to find help, when? A, abortion. That's fairly new. 
10, 12 years ago, or five years ago, we didn't have that as the top one, but today it's the top one. It's been added, that's good. So abortion, afraid, anxious, and we get all the way to Z, whatever that one is. Worried, I guess it makes it to W's where it ends up. I was getting propane. This is another little rabbit trail. I was getting propane just a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I'd like to engage with the propane guy, trying to find out how much this is going to cost me. And uh, so, you know, we're chatting, and he's now back in the new, he's got the cord, the hose all wound up, and he's up in the truck, you know, doing his computer thing and getting me the bill. And I said, Get, wait, wait here, just one minute. I've got a gift I'd like to give to you. So this, if you have propane, this next time the propane guy comes to your house, try this on him. So I went and got my little New Testament out and uh, brought it back to the truck. And I said, you know, this is something, I got a neat feature in this little book. You can find help from God. God has perfect answers for every problem that we have. Afraid, anxious. I said, my, I think it's a girlfriend. My girlfriend is so anxious. I am going to use this book and read from God's word what it has to say about anxious. You know, we have that promise that God's word does not return un- unto him void or empty. So, um, yeah, you, if you have propane, you know, try this out on your propane guy. Anyway, back to Angie, I uh, described those to her. And uh, I said, Angie said, okay, if I share a few more verses. And then I get to the very back cover of the book. And that's, uh, I call it our GPS, God's Plan of Salvation, GPS. It's really kind of the four spiritual laws thing that the crew, Campus Crusade has. You know, God loves you. They're all, if, you know, if you can read, you don't have to think too much more than just read. Because God's word will speak for itself. So the first one is God loves you, John 3.16. And it's written right there, for God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. And then the, the second one is, so that's point one, God loves you. Number two, we're all sinners. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Not too many people have an argument with that one. They know. But then the third one, God has a remedy for that problem. He has a remedy for our sin. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. And then the fourth point is your response. Angie, your response. For whoever calls in the name of the Lord will be saved. And then there's a little sample prayer that, uh, nothing magic about that prayer, but, you know, just read that prayer to them. And I, I really like to have them read it themselves. But the problem is, Angie is crying so much that she can't even see to read. God had prepared her heart. So I read it to her. Well, I ask her, first of all, Angie, have you ever prayed a prayer like this? No, I never have. Would you like to? Yes, I would. Angie, could you read this? I'd love to read it, but I can't. I'm crying so much. So I read it, and Angie was in complete agreement with that. And you know what happens? She accepted the Lord. And then you know what happens? The angels rejoice. And we were rejoicing as well over Angie's decision. So we have these uh, free gifts for you. I'll pick up one on the way out if you'd like. And um, I guess as we conclude, and I think it is time to conclude, and I probably have taken more time than what the Langford suggested that I take, but you have been so kind and patient and engaging 
Thank you for doing that. But let me, re let me leave one last thought with you. You know, it's been said that it, uh, a person needs about seven engagements with the gospel before they either finally get it. I was 30, 30 years old. Sometimes 30, yeah, I was 33 years old when I got it, when I invited Jesus to be my Lord and my Savior, my leader and my forgiver. It took me a while. You see, I had been a deacon, grew up going way back, never missed a day at church on the farm growing up, little church, Clinton, Minnesota. We lived in the farm. My parents were very committed. Well, I don't know how to say this nicely. You know, I never had a chance to ask my parents if they truly had accepted Jesus into their heart. I think they had. I really do. But anyway, I had gone to church, but it didn't really take. And Carol has about the same story. It didn't really take. You know, I thought that being baptized as an infant, I was taught that you're good to go. And um, going to Sunday school, you know, I've got the little um, thing, uh, the little pin with year one, two, three, you know, I, I had them going just about down to the floor, the perfect <laughs> attendance. But that doesn't do it. I mean, it's all good stuff, but it doesn't really do it. And it wasn't until I was 33 that God really spoke to my heart. And I had that personal encounter with him, inviting him to be my Lord and my Savior. So anyway, uh, it takes about seven people. I don't know how many people were engaged in my little story. You know, a whole bunch of Sunday school teachers, I guess. But then ultimately, a man named Harley Halverson that was still going to this mainline denominational church that had uh, suggested that I go to this retreat. And it was at that retreat that I found myself on my knees, tears coming down my face, inviting Jesus into my heart. So, as you witness with one of these, you may be number one. Or, and as in the case of Angie, you may be number seven. Or as in the case of the um, lady trying to find herself, uh, Mike, you could have been number three and maybe I was number four. I don't know where it was. But it's all about God. It is not about us. So as you have this opportunity to receive one of these and be the witness that we are commanded to be, think of this. God intersects people, places, times, and events, and even people's states of mind to accomplish his will. One more time. God intersects people, places, times, events, and even people's states of mind to accomplish his will. God bless you. Thank you so much.